Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yag back at it with another video. So of course this is the second part to the analysis with 23 dragons. So let's get to it, shall we? E4, E5, Knight of 3, Knight C6. So as you all know, this is a very standard king's pawn opening. And after the move bishop b5, it really brings me back to the memory of showing you how the Spanish works. And indeed, our 23 dragons went into a Spanish. This is also called the Roy Lopez. Um, there are so many other names for it. I'm just going to call it the Roy Lopez. A6, Bishop A4, Knight F6. There are so many lines to this. So for example, some people play g6 with the idea of bishop g7, knight e7, castles, d6, f5. Hopefully you get my arrows. If you don't, please let me know in the comments and I'll explain to you in a separate video. Another, um, another line could be the move d6, knight g7, a6 like I played but there's all kinds of moves. Bishop a4 in this position, people could play b5, people could play bishop e7, it's all. I played knight f6, threatened that pawn, and after castles, some people play knight takes, right? Some people don't. Some people play bishop e7, some people play b5. There are so many variations to this. Bishop e7, knight c3, protect the pawn. I play b5 because otherwise, bishop takes, d takes, knight takes pawn. We're going to be down a pawn. So let's play b5, bishop b3, and some people play castles here, some people play d6 here. I played d6, and the goal for black is really to expand on the queen side. So, knight a5, c5, queen c7, something like that. After d3, I played knight a5 because I really want that bishop. And in most Roy Lopez situations, one thing to keep in mind is how important this bishop is. So when I play d6, white should be thinking about a move like a4. Because the goal is, first of all, you want to try to weaken black's queenside setup a little bit. But second of all, you want to keep this bishop alive because this bishop is really important. And let's say a move like b4 and a move like knight e2, keep in mind, I can't take because there's bishop d5. Or if you take, is there bishop d5? Bishop d5, I believe there's queen d7. Hmm. After bishop takes e4, there's d5. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So I would suggest, hmm. you know, I would suggest the move a3, I think just preventing this sort of b4 push and being able to retreat the bishop. But in this case, there's this move bishop g4. So it's a little bit tricky with regards to retaining this bishop. Now, if you want to play a Ray Lopez, I would suggest either the move rook e1 or the move um, d3. Now let's look at this. After d3, white protects the pawn, b5, bishop b3, castles. Some people play a4 here, a4, b4, a5, and sort of like white creates this sort of maneuver to try to get these key squares for compensation, right? Also, you, white wants to keep the stronghold and sort of 
hold the positional grip in the position. So let's keep going a little bit. Um, some people play A4. That's it. I'll let you discover freely in the opening. But after D6, D3, Knight A5, notice I'm going for the bishop again. But in this case, it's a closed setup right now. So right now, the knight would be okay. The bishop would also be okay. There's some space to work in the center. Not that much, but I would still say the bishop is still okay here. So after a move like knight d5, I just decided, you know what? I like the bishop. I'm going to chop it off. Knight takes, bishop takes, a takes b3, castles. And after a move like bishop e3, White plans to play the move d4, open up the position, play something like c3, b4, sort of cement these two pawns. And I sort of think, okay, I cannot allow that. So I play c5 myself. I want to control this square completely. And at this point, you know, I have to start thinking of a strategy, right? And my strategy will ultimately, um, at this point, you know, I start thinking about, okay, do I play g6, bishop g7, f5, and just go Hail Mary on the king side? Do I do that? Or do I go for something like bishop b7, queen c7, rook d8, and d5? Go for something in the center, right? Because those are the places I think I have a capability to really thrash through. But R23 Dragons catches me off guard with this C4 move. And the first thing I would say is that I'm not sure this is completely sound because White's goal, White's pawn structure here is much better than if it's like this because if it's like this, there's only this backward pawn that, that um, white has to deal with. But if you move the pawn up, these two pawns, and maybe likely this pawn, are going to be weak as well. And so I would suggest, you know, with regard to pawn structures, it's also important to not weaken that many of your pawns. And after a move like bishop g4, you know, I'm just putting pressure on this diagonal sort of tying the queen to this diagonal. After h3, I decide, you know what, let's let's go for this sort of other, the other weakness. And after queen c2, queen e7, um, our 20th dragons proposes a very interesting setup. And at this moment, I can see that, you know, He's making a really good effort to try to try to take away those double pawns, right? And I sort of think, okay, do I want to take here? Do I want to take here? Do I want to get one of my rooks out to, like, sort of prepare this sort of, you know, prepare this sort of capture better? What do I do, right? And... In the end, I decide to take on c4 because after he takes, I'm going to take here, right? So after, let's say, I was thinking about pawn takes pawn, but here after pawn takes pawn and something like pawn takes pawn, rook takes, rook takes, and queen c6. And you can notice, let me just play this out for you, but you can notice that white gets enough play to really gang up on these weak pawns, right? And so I kind of felt, okay. The other thing was after taking b4, I could play this move b3, but I wasn't sure about queen c6 putting pressure here, pressure here, pressure here, felt a little bit uncomfortable. So I took this way, 
And I feel like 23 dragons should have taken this way. Because after takes pawn, queen takes pawn, d takes, well, at least white can sort of work with this weakness. For example, rook a5, c4, queen c2, get the other rook out, try to go for this weakness, and then use this knight to sort of grapple onto this weakness. Right, so there are multiple weaknesses, but let's look at the game. Instead, d takes c4, I get a pawn, and you can sh I can say that I'm slowly consolidating my pawn, this sort of protection barrier here. And yeah, now queen d2 is, I guess, now, although you might say, okay, I'm attacking this pawn, right? I believe that queen d3 should work a little bit better than queen d2. Why? Why do you ask? Why, why do, do you say that? Well, first of all, this pawn is actually really important to white's position. And it's hard to know why at first sight, but the goal is for white to get this knight to d5, right? The dream here is that you put your knight on a strong square, but right now it's impossible to attain, right? You could, for example, play knight, knight, move the bishop, knight, knight, but that would take a long time, right? But we still got to keep our options open. So by playing queen d2, you know, I can take on e4, come to c2 if I want, or I could play something like bishop takes h3. So I kind of feel like queen d3 just continues to give the flexibility of putting that knight on d5, just a personal preference. And I guess knight g5 wasn't exactly the best. Um, I kind of thought another plan was get this queen back and start doubling on the A file, maybe? Or another one of the plans was queen d3, rook c1, push this pawn, because you want to really break through on the queen side, right? And of course, you want to support this pawn while breaking through, because he is the weak point. And so if I break through on this side, it's game over, right? So having the intention to really play for it on the queen side. So for example, queen d3, let's say I play h6, rook c1, king h7, right? Let's say, for example, you could play something like knight d2, sort of secure this sort of post. I play king h8, and one day you could use the idea of knight going all the way to d5, or you could use the idea of pushing c5, or doubling the rook on the a file, but I guess those are more viable plans. And ultimately, I pushed, and I took another pawn, and this was the right idea, right? Weakening, finally weakening this d6 pawn, but it came a little bit too late. I got a very crucial pawn, attacked both rooks, and it was good night. So I guess the lesson to learn in this game, the first one being c4, right? It sort of made two additional weaknesses, and then I guess the second one was um, knowing the sort of plan, right? Doubling or pushing c5. Those things are hard to master. Putting the knight on d5 is hard to master. Eventually you'll get it, and thank you for listening.